to be adjoined by the beautiful Nadine Chul, a native of St. Lucia, but living in Barbados. Nadine is a gospel artist who uses her songs to help spread the good news of Jesus. She has won many awards and performed at large events such as the St. Lucia Jazz Festival, the World Championships of Performing Arts in Los Angeles, Hollywood, ministering along Regina McCree and the McCree sisters. And she reacts to theatrical collaboration, theatrical collaborations in tribute to Derek Walcott under the patronage of Joseph Marcel, Jeffrey, and the C sitcom, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. They are just a few of the accomplishments of our next guest on Caribbean Connections. Welcome, Nadine, and welcome to Caribbean Connections. Thank you. Should I go ahead and turn on one? What uh, is no? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Oh, the internet seems to be messing up. Again. I can hear you clearly. Can you see me? Well, at the moment, not now, but we do have a lovely picture of you on screen whilst we do this interview. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Okay. So we will begin. What is the intention and purpose of gospel music? I think that the intention and purpose of gospel music is to heal, to facilitate healing, and to remind people, especially those who have never experienced love, um, that the author of love has a place in his heart for them. And so I believe that gospel music is supposed to communicate that in different ways. Lovely, lovely. So your passion for music. Where did it come from, Nadine? Oh, well, as, I think it's innate. As far back as I can remember, I was the five-year-old preschooler who would be the one with her mouth wide open in front of the microphone. Um, and then anytime I was called on to sing, I just seemed to have this innate love for music. And so by the time I got to primary school, I was in the choir. And people started complimenting me on how my, my singing would take them to different places. And so I started to believe them. And um, long story short, I was usually given the solo parts and then I was called to represent uh, my country in various places around the world. Compliments continued coming in. And then um, I realized that this was not just uh, a hobby, but a calling. Um, because I saw how the music affected people in such a positive way. Mm, indeed, indeed. So you mentioned starting your career from since the age of five. So at what point did you consider making music and singing a profession? Well, I think that once I became a teenager and people realized that, hey, we could somehow monetize this gift. Um, a, a certain band contacted my family. They were fam the, the leader of the band was a family friend. And they asked if my parents would allow me to, to sing at various hotels around the island at the time. And so I started singing and making money from the time I was 13 years old, <laughs> hopping from hotel to hotel with this band. So other than performing at the, hotel, at the hotel and some of the places that we would have mentioned in your introduction, can you tell us where else you would have performed? So <clears throat> I would have been to several places uh, around the region. Um, I mean, I could name some countries, basically almost every Caribbean island, um, Grenada, Dominica, Barbados, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Jamaica. Um, like you mentioned in your in your introduction, I also I, I have performed at the St. Lucia Jazz Festival alongside Lisa Vandross and Kathy LaBelle. I actually spent a day with her. Um, I have done the World Championships of the Performing Arts in Los Angeles, been to Hollywood. Um, I've done all these things, but there was a void. Um, I remember being in Hollywood and seeing how everything was so staged and um, in my mind, I translated that to being artificial. It was an artificial experience for me. 
And um, I decided in that moment that I needed something more. And that is where I believe um, my decision uh, was birthed in my decision to use my gift to bring healing. And what better way to do that than to my own faith? Amen. Ah, so the question of the morning, what has been your best performance of your career thus far? Oh, oh my. <laughs> that is a hard question. I think <laughs> because it's all relative. When I was, when I did the jazz festival, I would say that singing jazz on that main stage um, was among, certainly among some of my best performances. But then when I sing in church or I sing at Christian events and people come up to me in tears at the end and said, you know, you just don't know what you did for me. You don't know what I was going through. And there's something about your voice. There's something about the way you carry a song that touched me at, at my core. I don't know what to do with that, except to say that, you know, it's not me. It has to be something, someone greater than me working through me. Indeed, indeed. The producer, Roger Ryan. Tell us, how, it is, how has it been working with him? Like liquid gold. Liquid Ooh, gold. I, like I, say, <laughs> I, say, I say liquid gold. I say liquid gold because... Everything he does is excellent. So that's the gold part. Liquid because he is so versatile. I mean, you walk into the studio because I've been to Nashville. I've been to his studio. You walk into the studio. You're like, hey, Raj, you know, we've known each other for like over 20 years. I said, you know, I have a song and um, I think it's really going to minister. And he's like, okay, let's hear it. And so I sing it. And then he starts to play it. And the way he interprets that song musically makes me shut my mouth, you know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, he somehow interprets, he musically interprets the song in a way that I could never imagine. And I just think that that's priceless. You know, he is like the best or the most, uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it. He's, I think he's still a secret. He should uh, be more known than he is right now, but he tends to stay in the background. And I realize there's a lot more promotion happening you know, from his team. So very soon, I believe the world is going to hear a lot more about Mr. Roger Ryan. I mean, we're talking about an eight, he, how many of, he had, I think he has eight Grammy nominations, three of which were winning projects. He has worked with Whitney Houston, yes. Brian McKnight, Cece Winans. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he, 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 I think he was also Cece Winans' first music director. Ooh, so you were working with a big shot then. Well, he doesn't call himself that. He's like one of the most humble people ever. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so sweet. And congrats on working with him. Cover of Through It All featuring Joel Brooks features the two of you, Nadine, in the studio. It's such a simple yet impactful. It was such a simple yet impactful thing. What was behind the idea of shooting this video? And uh, you know what? Can you tell us? Okay. I think what you're asking, because we're still having some, uh, a few Audio difficulties. The sound, Do but you're asking about the Through It All video that I did, uh, the yes. collaboration with, yeah, with, sure, Joel. with yes. Joel Brooks. That was actually, that was actually done after a very, uh, a very good friend of mine passed away. Um, I was supposed to go to the States to sing at his funeral, but couldn't make it. And I wanted to find a way to be there. And so I contacted Roger Ryan and I asked him, this is the producer we just spoke about. And um, I said, could you please just make me a track for this song? Because I think that it encapsulates everything that I want to say um, to his mom, because he was just about my age. He was a young guy when, you know, cancer claimed his life. And, um, you know, she said, okay. So he said, fine. And he literally just went onto the piano and played it once. So the track that you're hearing in that video is actually just a one time um play composition and um i went on and sang it with joel brooks joel as you saw did an amazing job with the video he actually did um some bb's for me as you would see and um and then he did some some video work as well which he i mean he did a great job the original video actually has footage of my friend um so that's also available on youtube uh 
And, you know, it was just a very moving time for me. And I was trying to find a way to, to reach his mom, to touch his mom, to touch his family. And what better way than through Andre Crouch's Through It All? Well, we're going to take a look at that video right now, Nadine. So here it sure. is. Questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That the trial comes only To make me strong I've seen a lot of people There were times when I felt so all alone In my lonely hours, those precious lonely hours Jesus let me know that I'm His own indeed so can you enlighten us on oh, your songwriting you. process how is that how are you inspired do you just take out a pen and well, a pencil and write well i'm an emotional be being and you know um emotions and art have a thing going on so when i feel something when i'm, I'm going through a particular experience um a, a thought may come to my mind and then i begin to write um, and sometimes when I experience something that touches me emotionally, a melody jumps into my, my, my heart and I begin to hum it. For me, the melody always comes first. And uh, I get the entire melody and sometimes I'm able to put the lyrics in through inspiration uh, almost immediately. And sometimes it takes days, weeks, months, sometimes years. Um, and, you know, the song that I'm working on currently with Mr. Roger Ryan um, the melody similarly came almost immediately years ago, you know, but the lyrics took some time to come. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what my process is. I write the song and then I sing it to uh, people who, who, who are close to me and get some feedback and decide, okay, should I speak this, should I speak that? But that's what typically happens. Melody, then lyrics. <laughs> Nadine? What does it take, Hi, in your estimation? Hi, I feel like this is the first time <laughs> we're having this conversation. This is so funny. All right, so uh, what does it take uh, to be a gospel singer? Oh, <laughs> a lot of, first of all, love for the Lord, because, you know, there are people who sing, and they sing really well, technically, but, you know, they don't know how to really carry the, the, the spirit of, of the message because maybe their hearts are in the wrong place. Maybe, you know, their motivations are, are wrong, you know, but it takes a certain level of relationship with God, I believe, uh, to be able to communicate the spirit of God. Um, I think that's first and foremost what it takes, a real relationship with God. And that doesn't mean that you always get it right because we all make mistakes and we all fall. But I think it has something to do with the direction of our lives. We don't stay fallen. We pick ourselves up and we move again. Um, and then it takes uh, knowledge, training. You know, I have had to have voice training um, for, you know, over a period of time um, with different people, Judy Rodman, 
Um, most recently, Angela Henry, who happens to be the business manager of uh, Roger Ryan. Um, she's just one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. And, you know, she, she has invested time in me. Um, it takes a group of committed and talented people around you who share your vision um, in different capacities, right? Um, some who would be experts in the business side of things, some who are the creatives, you know, and I think that through, uh, you know, a shared vision and we were able to collaborate and do this and, and try to contribute to the growth of the kingdom. What was the most challenging song you have completed to date? And I would also ask your favorite song, and I know Jamie likes to do this. Can we have a verse from it? Can you sing a verse from it? Oh my gosh. Um, one of, I mean, the most challenging song I've done must have been a jazz song, you know. Okay. Um, I don't really, <laughs> um, you know, I think I did a tribute to Ella Fitzgerald at some time uh, in the jazz festival. You know, the ones that, you know, I haven't done that in a while. Oh, nice. <laughs> that, that's phenomenal. I think, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I say thank you. I think oh, that yeah. my favorite song right now, because I mean, it's almost impossible to ask the singer what's your favorite song because it's seasonal um is um jesus 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 there is something about that name he is master savior jesus like a fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about there is something about there is something about that name. If you are ever in St. Kitts, I want dibs on background vocals with you. I was singing that with you in my head. <laughs> I don't know what it would Jamie, sound like. You're kind. <laughs> <laughs> the voice is still warming up. This is well, if that's if that's how it is when you're this warming up, the first time I'm thinking for the morning, so I excuse my my morning voice. If that's your morning voice, I can't wait to hear you know the midday, exactly. evening, afternoon voice. Exactly.